and welcome back to Journey Through Preschool. I know it's been a little while since I made a video. I'm so sorry. Life got kind of crazy, but I'm back. And today we're gonna be talking about the whole brain child strategy number four, which is use it or lose it. We wanna talk about how we want to appeal to the upstairs brain, right? We always want to help our child use their upstairs brain. However, we really want to encourage like everyday use of their upstairs brain. We want to integrate that upstairs brain as much as we can. There are five core values or core things that we look to enhance our in the integration of the upstairs brain. The first one is sound decision making, right? Instinctively, parents really want to make their decisions for their child in fear of failure, in fear of rescuing them, or just pure convenience that parents often or caregivers will make decisions for children. However, that is not integrating their upstairs brain because a child's ability to have sound decision-making skills is part of their upstairs brain. That's where they have the ability to do that. And so we need to work out that muscle as much as possible because the brain is essentially a, a muscle. We need to give our kids the opportunity as often as possible to make their own decisions. For our little pre kers this could look like as much as, do you wanna wear the blue shoes or red shoes today? And that, that decision right there, right? We really want our children to make the decision and then live with the consequences of those decisions that they make. So whether or not they decide to wear the blue shoes, they have to be okay with the fact that they chose blue shoes for the rest of the day. The ability to make sound decisions is actually what we call executive functioning. This is the brain's ability to weigh different options that are available to the child. So that is whether, the, again, going back to the blue shoes or the red shoes, that is deciding whether or not they want to wear blue or red. I do want to, you know, touch in on the fact that executive functioning deficits are really very common in students with ADHD or students with autism spectrum disorder. Executive function is something that is very, can be very difficult for those students in particular. And so encouraging sound decision making in your everyday life will be really important for these kiddos. And the next one is emotional regulation. Emotional regulation and body control is remaining in control of yourself internally and externally. Encouraging calming techniques like taking a deep breath, counting to 10, going for a walk, things like that to help ensure that the child is staying emotionally regulated because when a child is not emotionally regulated, it can be harder for, their, for them to access their upstairs brain. So really in, encouraging on that emotional regulation, labeling their emotions, saying I feel statements, I feel sad when I can't go to the park, or encouraging those kind of words so the child is comfortable discussing how they feel and really has that intellectual ability to say, I'm feeling this way, what can I do to make it better? And then the next one is self-understanding, right? Asking questions that go beyond surface level, that, that make the child really think about what's going on. A, a good example of increasing self-understanding is asking questions like, okay, so why do you think you made that choice? What led you to make that choice? Or why do you think you felt that way when this happened? Really just going diving deeper, making open-ended questions, have an open dialogue with them. The more the kids think about what's going on internally, the more they will develop the ability to understand and respond to the world within them and the world around them. The next one is empathy. Empathy is a function that happens in our upstairs brain. Simply by drawing attention to other people's emotions around you in your daily encounters can help exercise their upstairs brain and build new levels of compassion for your child. I think this can as easy as, you know, when you greet someone in the morning, asking them how they're feeling. Oh, how are you feeling today? Encouraging your child to do that, right? Just so they can be in tune with others' emotions as well as their own. All of those attributes that I just talked about coincide with one of the most important things we always want our children to develop, and that's a good sense of morality. When our kids are able to make sound decisions, they're able to regulate their emotions, they're able to have empathy and a good self-understanding, 
They will develop a robust and active sense of morality. This is so important for our children. This will help them de develop the sense of right and wrong, right? This is, you know, when they become teenagers, those big peer pressure situations. It'll help them to navigate those situations. But it'll also help them understand what is the greater good beyond their own individual needs. Like, what is the good moral decision to make? What is the good ethical decision to make? And exercising the upstairs brain really does a good job of this. Another way to exercise the upstairs brain is to give hypothetical situations or scenarios for your child. If we're working on safety, oh, I wonder what would happen if we ran into the road and a car was coming. I wonder if that would be dangerous. So getting them to think on different situations or hmm, I wonder if we pushed him because we're angry, what would, how would he feel? That's another one, building on empathy, right? The point is to challenge our children to think about when they act on or how they respond to things and what are the consequences for those things. A good example of all of these put together, and I have it right here in my book. I can add the visual to the video so you guys can see it. It says, so it looks like there is a girl at the park playing Frisbee with her mother. And it says, I'm sorry, but you can't keep that Frisbee. It doesn't belong to you. Let's put it back where you found it. Instead of doing that, let's practice saying things like, I know you want to keep it, but what will happen if the other child comes back for it and it isn't here? Using that, you're, also, you're letting the child know that we can't keep it because it's not the moral thing to do because when the child comes back to look for it, it won't be there. I think that when we practice these things, when we practice sound decision making and emotional regulation, the use of empathy and, more, and good morality, we are setting up our children for success and we are also working on ourselves as well because these are all things that we have to model for our students or our children. They don't just learn these things on their own, they learn from us. So it's, it's, it's a valuable tool in itself to work on yourself and with the children. So if you like this video, please leave a comment. Please like this video, all the things, and I will see you next time. Until then, please continue to encourage and support. Thanks.